Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Shanran Miles GPS Bike Computer. Marketed as your first GPS bike computer, the new Shanran Miles GPS computer is a very unique offering from Shanran. Like their other products, such as the Raz Pro, the Miles computer made a big splash on Kickstarter and was recently successfully funded and has started shipping. Now, Shanran isn't new to GPS computers either. They have a number of lights as well as a wide range of computers with integrated lights and have been in the business for over eight years. So with the Miles GPS computer, they're really targeting entry level or more budget oriented cyclists with this really high feature yet low cost computer. They also offer a couple other accessories like a mount and sensors that we'll review separately. Now, as far as packaging on the Miles computer, you can see really simple. It's a small box for the head unit by itself, basic information on the side, and the features on the rear. So a lot of features here despite the low price. I'll go ahead and take it out of the box and we'll go over the specs. So retail price on this is only $90. So it's really cool to see sub 100 GPS computers. It also has a power estimation feature which utilizes your weight, cadence, and other factors to really give a nice estimate of your power when you're riding, even without a power meter. Now you can connect a power meter or other accessories. It's BLE or AMP plus connectivity. So you can do hard rate, cadence, speed, or a power meter directly with the GPS computer. It has a 2.1 inch screen. So really decently sized, so good visibility. And it has up to 25 hour runtime, which is also really impressive. The other nice thing about this GPS computer is that it integrates with their own RAS Pro taillight to control and monitor its status. In terms of what comes in the box, you can see really nicely packaged. You have this nice little box with the little plastic tray. You get the computer itself, a nice instruction manual to go over how to use it and configure it. And with this, you also get a basic mount. So go ahead and pop this out. So you can see it's a basic O-ring style mount. So you can place this on your stem or handlebar, drop the little pad underneath it for a little extra support. And then you have two size O-rings, so larger and smaller depending on your stem or handlebar size. And then wrap this around for a nice secure fit. Get a micro USB charging cable as well to charge, recharge the GPS computer. Let's take a second to look at the weight of the computer. So the head unit by itself, that comes in at 62 grams, so quite light. And then the simple handlebar mount with the pad and the two smaller O-rings comes in at only six grams. Now, before we get the setup on the bike, let's go ahead and look at the fit and finish of the computer. It's a nice 2.1 inch size screen. So it's glossy finish, rectangular design with these beveled edges, and it's a matte black style finish. You have the Shanran logo written on the side, and that's about it. It's described as aerodynamic, but that just means it has a basic curved style. The integrated battery is hidden underneath it, and you have a Garmin style quarter turn mount, which is really nice to have. So you can use any third party mount with this computer. You don't need a proprietary mount only from Shanran or other uh, single companies. You get a micro USB charging port underneath it, so you just pop it off your bike and then charge it with a nice little gasket that keeps it safe from the elements. It's IPX7 rated, so we'll definitely handle rainy days or wet weather riding without an issue. You do see the screws here, which is a little bit unusual, so you can't actually open this up if you ever needed to. Otherwise, you have a three button interface, non-touch screen. So depending on which button you press or which combination or press or hold, they'll do different actions. So now let's go ahead and set up the Shanran GPS computer. I have it here mounted with the click to mount. It's a simple plastic design. It can actually be flipped left or right, which is kind of cool, as you can just move the puck. You can see once it's installed, it works pretty well. There's some flex because of the plastic uh, nature of it, but it is a cheap uh, mount. So definitely a good one to consider if you don't have an out front mount already. Now, as far as setting up the GPS computer, as with a lot of cheap ones, you simply hold it to turn it on and you're actually ready to go. So it will use the GPS signal to get your altitude, to get your speed, to get your time zone. So everything should be pretty well set right when you turn it on, but you may still want to configure it. So hold the bottom two buttons 
That'll enter the config menu. And here you can see one of the limitations of the screen design. Uh, because everything is kind of in a grid, everything's limited to these certain areas. So sensor is kind of limited here. So you have SEN on the left side, SOR on the right, because it's, usually this is divided. And then this is where it gets a little bit confusing. You're in the first sensor and you have a little icon there. So you can do the speed sensor. If you click on the bottom right, it'll uh, go through the different options. You can do a cadence sensor. You can do a combo sensor. You can do a heart rate monitor. You can even do a power meter, which is really cool, especially at this price point. And then finally, you can also do a light. And that's probably one of the coolest things. So if you have a RAS Pro, which is a light we've actually reviewed before, you can actually connect it with this GPS computer. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes on that. And now it's going to automatically pair to the first one it finds. So you can see really quick, it was an ant plus connection, success. And now they're synced and you have that little indicator. And now you can actually see that little icon up there, the little LED indicator is synced with the RAS Pro. And that's kind of a cool feature. So it's actually a full RGB color LED. So the RAS Pro can actually change its LED color and so can the indicator. And it stays in sync. So when you have a brake sensor or a bump sensor, it'll automatically change. And if you change a color, this follow suit pretty quickly. That's the only thing you can do. You can only turn it on and off and monitor the current state. You can't actually see the battery or change the current state. So I think it's kind of a cool feature, maybe a little bit of a gimmick, but definitely cool and something they can definitely build on. I would love to be able to actually see the battery status or change the mode without having to stop and then touch it uh, if they added a sub menu option. But definitely a nice feature and I haven't seen this in any other GPS. So we'll leave that on, go through the rest of the menu. You can set the wheel circumference. You only need this if you have a speed sensor. Otherwise, they'll just use GPS. So I'm going to go ahead and skip through this. You can set the units. And again, the config menu is fairly easy to read, but there's this more uh, cryptic kind of one, two. So you're on the second page, and it shows you you're trying to set the miles per hour or kilometers per hour, so you can switch between them. Pretty well laid out otherwise, though, given the limitations. You can set your weight. This is important because of the power the estimated power, it will use your weight and other data. So I'll cycle through that. Then up here, if you look, you can set the uh, temperature units, Fahrenheit or Celsius. We'll keep that. You can set the road or mountain bike configuration. I believe this is only used for the RAS Pro as it can change the uh, calibration of the brake sensor and bump sensor as it obviously needs to be less sensitive when you're off-road and on rough terrain. You can turn off GPS, which is a feature I haven't seen before either. That could save battery. So if you have a speed sensor, you can run this with just your speed sensor and get a lot more battery life out of it. It also has this beep, so you can turn the beep on or off. It's kind of cool to have audible beeps. Uh, typically, you don't have that on lower cost computers. I'll leave it on. You can say your FTP, and again, that helps with the normalized power display. You can say your time zone. And what's cool is you can actually override the current time. A lot of GPS computers, you just set the time zone and you're kind of stuck. So if you're someone like me in a daylight savings area, you'll always have the wrong time. And then once you're done, it will go back through the main menu. So you have three screens, P1, P2, P3. By default, this is the current configuration, RPM, heart rate. You have miles, it shows you the road configuration, time, and then always speed on the bottom. You also have a lap timer here. So if you do one press and you're in an activity, it will actually iterate through. You can use the app to configure this to actually uh, with a couple options. So it's nice to have the customization. And then within any screen, you can show the real time or the average by clicking the left or the maximum. So that's a really cool feature. So plenty of customization here. And even though this is a cheaper display, it looks much more expensive with this three good layout. The other thing is uh, with the three button design, uh, the buttons will do different things depending on which, uh, whether you hold them or press them. So if you hold the bottom right and you have the light connected, you can see it turned off and the tail light also turned off. If you hold it again, it will turn on the tail light. So that's a cool way. So you can automatically just turn it on, turn it off from here without actually going down there and pressing it on the actual device. I believe it only puts it in standby mode though. So if you want to store the bike, I do recommend manually turn it off using the power button on the RAS Pro. Otherwise, one press on this will cycle through the three pages. 
And again, you can customize this using the app, which we'll show later. To start or stop a ride, you can hold the bottom left button, and it auto pauses if you have no speed. As I'm sitting here, you can see it'll show the pause symbol. It'll automatically go to play when you're moving, so auto pause, auto restart. Single press on that button will go through real time, average, or max. Now let's take a look at the Shannon Sports app. It's available both on the Android and iOS systems. It's a great way to actually sync up the Shannon as well as the RAS Pro and configure it. So to get started, you click Devices, add new device, click the Miles. Now we'll start a scan, and you can see it brings it up pretty quickly. Now once you're connected, you actually get quite a few options, which is really cool. So I'll skip the wizard. So you can see the total distance, time, calories, uh, percent memory used on the device. And now you can actually adjust the backlight. So you can adjust it from zero to 100%, which is really cool. You can't do that on the device. By default, it's set to automatically turn on when you press a button, but you can change that to be always on or auto based on time zone. Next, you can change the bike setting, and here it's where it's a lot more obvious what that setting is. You can see it basically does the tire circumference, and that's about it. You can't actually change the sensors per profile. You can customize the display, and this is a really nice feature. You can't do that on the device either. So for the top four fields, you have two options per field, and three options for the bottom two. You can do left-right balance on both of them, or do power, as well as cadence. It's pretty limited. So if you don't have the hard rate monitor, you can only really do normalized power. And you get three whole pages, so you click Next. So there's actually more pages than actual data available. Definitely enough here, though, to really customize, and it's nice to see, especially with such a limited display. You can do the elevation calibration, so you can input your own if you have a better estimate than what the GPS did. You can change the units just like you can on the system, but obviously faster with the touch screen. You can do the advanced settings, such as connecting different sensors. And you can update the firmware, which is really nice too. So you definitely want to do that as to keep up to date. Now the Shannon app itself is pretty simple. So you can see devices that are connected. So you can connect your RAS Pro or other ones. You can sync your ride. So once the RAS Pro is connected, you can see which rides haven't been uploaded and then download them. Be warned that though this takes a long time. So definitely plan to wait a bit when you do that. It also has a navigation app, which is kind of interesting. And then you can do heart rate training. And here you can see it's actually not translated. So there are little bugs like this, at least with the version we're testing here. Otherwise, a decent app, and you can review your rides, do some basic analysis. I still think Strava or other apps are a little bit better than this, but the fact that you can customize this and then sync rides to Strava or other platforms is a really nice option. And otherwise, the app is easy to use. Now let's take a look at the Miles GPS on the road. Overall, we were pretty satisfied with the GPS. The GPS quality was good in our area. No real cutouts and data display was updated pretty quickly. You do have to remember to start and stop your rides. There's no notification. That's one thing you kind of get used to with higher end GPS computers. But once you start the ride, it starts recording the data and showing live. Overall, the interface is easy to use. You can switch between average, real time, and max using the left button. And the RAS Pro tail light integration is cool, especially with that little LED indicator. It's not actually annoying when you're riding, even though it seems like a blinking LED would. We do wish Shannon had gone a little bit further with that integration, as you can't really change the modes, which would be cool to have when you're riding. We have here is the Psych Plus M1, which is about $50 currently on Amazon. Retail price is about $70, though. We also have the Brain Rider 15 Neo, which is a $70 GPS computer, which we just reviewed. Really impressive features. And then obviously we have the Shanron at $90. So if we compare the Psych Plus versus the Shanron, what you can see is the Psych Plus has a much larger monitor. It's almost three inches versus the 2.1 on the Shanron, but it's a much cheaper display and you can actually see those uh, backlights here. So it's actually a low quality screen where it's not really diffused properly. And then the display is really limited. You can only cycle through things and if you don't have a heart rate sensor, power meter, or cadence sensor, you just lose its space. So uh, less efficient with the use of area, but obviously much bigger. It has a standard Garmin mount, just like the Miles, but just a bigger body. 
Otherwise, I think the Shanran is a lot easier to use, and it's really nice to have that light feature. It's also odd to see that uh, beeping feature. As I mentioned, a lot of the uh, cheaper computers don't have audible sound, so it's nice to have, even though you probably want to turn it off as it gets a little bit annoying. But again, the Shanran does use better use of the area, although it is a smaller screen. Uh, the more fair comparison is probably the Brighton Rider 15 Neo. It's a new computer from Brighton and their most affordable option. You can see comparing screen to screen, very similar layout. You have that uh, segmented design, so everything's kind of predefined. So that does limit things. So again, like if you go in the config menu for uh, the Shanran, you can see things are pretty limited. And same thing here. So you have more limited display uh, where everything's kind of pre-designated. Pre now, Shanran has done a good job in that. Brian's also done a good job as you can use the uh, app to kind of configure the layout. And the overall interfaces are pretty simple as both of them have three-bound interface. Uh, the main difference between the Brian and the Shanran, I think, is the Shanran has a couple of cool features like the power estimation and the connectivity with the RAS Pro that obviously the Brian wouldn't have. Uh, also, the Brighton has a Brighton style mount versus the Garmin. And obviously the Garmin is a little more compatible with other devices. Otherwise, similar profiles. The Brighton is 2 inches. Shannon's 2.1, but it does just look bigger because of the body. As far as which one to pick, it's kind of up to you, depending on which features you want. I think the Brighton layout is a little bit easier to read, but a little more cluttered with the way it's laid out. Uh, with this, you have more even spacing between them but less of an emphasis on the large speed display as it's kind of on the bottom with a smaller size. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the Shanran Miles GPS. What we like about it is that it has a customizable display. Using the Shanran app, you can actually adjust some of the fields and change the three page layout, which is a nice tool to have. It also has an intuitive three row layout, which is easy to read and has a lot of information, even though it has a segmented display which has everything predefined. And the power estimation tools are great for training and it's better to compare that than speed as the power really takes into account cadence, speed, and gradient instead of just a single measure. Some of the cons for the GPS is the fact that it's a little bit of a confusing menu. It has config one, two, three with icons. But again, that's a limitation of this screen. Also the RAS Pro Taillight Integration is a little bit limited. We feel like they could have done a few more features to make it more useful. The LED indicator is nice, but the fact that you can't actually change the mode makes it less useful. And finally, the bike profiles are limited to only storing the wheel size. It doesn't actually store the sensors. So if you switch the computer between bikes, you're gonna have to resync sensors. Taking everything into account would give the Miles GPS a 9.0 out of 10. It's a unique budget GPS computer with some nice features like that power estimation and RAS Pro integration. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com, as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.